What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, John from the Game of Doer here, welcoming you back to week 11 of the NFL Power Rankings. Now, uh, this week has been a doozy. Um, honestly, there was a lot of surprises this week that you came in and didn't expect to happen happening. Um, so we'll kind of go jump right into this. This week, I'm sure everybody was happy. They didn't have to deal with the New York trash. Um, the Jets are 32nd. Don't need to talk about them for once. Yes. Okay, moving on. Um, oh, well, before I move on, I should say the minuses and pluses are reflective of the week 10 power rankings, even though those did not go out. Unfortunately, I feel bad about that. But um, so, yeah, we kind of skipped the week in this. Uh, but yeah, so you can kind of put a piece together where each team was based off of the pluses and minuses, um, because I had it set up for week 10 to do it. Just never got the time to record it. Um, so heading, heading on to week 11, uh, Dallas. So. Dallas is on a bye week, naturally. Um, I believe. I'm not wrong in that, right? I should not be wrong in that assumption. I believe they were on bye. They indeed were. Um, so, yeah, the bottom two teams in the NFL don't have to be worried about. Yes. Anyway, um, next we have the Denver Broncos, who got demolished by the Raiders. They go down three. Uh, they were at 27 last week. I felt like they kind of looked a little better in their, you know, lost the Falcons, but again, it was the Falcons, um, but this week, they just get obliterated, um, and that was more indicative of how this team has been this entire season, um, Drew Locke, honestly, I don't know how I feel about him, he could be good, he could be bad, um, he doesn't have a lot on his resume, I would say he's a bottom tier QB, but also, like I said, without a lot on his resume now, um, yeah, they just need to improve on both ends of the spectrum. They've got to rebuild in full force. Um, next, we have the Washington football team moving two spots after a almost win against the Detroit Lions. They lose on a Matt Prater last-second field goal. So it is Matt Prater. It is something he's been good at like forever now. Uh, so we're not surprised that they lost on Matt, uh, on the foot of Matt Prater, but... Um, definitely improving on the defensive end of the ball. Offensive end of the ball, or is it, like, looking better? I like the fact that Alex Smith is the quarterback there. He kind of is finally getting that resurgence. Um, definitely not a great team, talent-wise and everything else-wise. Of course, you kept up with the Lions, um, so that's good signs. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I feel about this team. Um, next, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're staying put. Now, a lot of people are going to be mad at me that they're staying put. Uh, but there's a team in here that kind of showed up uh, and showed and did a lot more than we had bargained for this week. Um, but yeah, I mean, they put up a good fight against the Packers. I think if they would have pulled off the victory, they might have moved up a little bit. But to me, they're not good enough to really solidify them or put them in a good spot. Um, next, we got Philadelphia dropping six spots this week. They are the biggest loser of the week. Um, failing to the Giants, the Giants proved that they have defensive superiority, um, and if Daniel Jones can play well, or if they can get a better quarterback, then boom, they're balling, um, so they need a good high-tier quarterback, and honestly, things are gonna be different, and the New York Giants are gonna resurge back to where, um, <laughs> the NFC East is respectable. Um, right now, obviously, they are not, as they are 26. They go up three spots after their victory against the Eagles. Um, again, as I said, I think this team and this division is not respectable whatsoever. Um, and whoever the five seed is in the NFC, um, you got to prepare, be prepared to play against a good defense, but don't even worry about Daniel Jones and that offense, that trashy offense of theirs um that'll more than likely go to the Buccaneers which will be interesting to say the least the home game against the Buccaneers um if Tom Brady does not play well then we know what happens but um no honestly that's kind of how I view this team next we got the Atlanta Falcons the Atlanta Falcons uh they are um 25 again um they are a team that you look at and you're like eh but they had again a nice nice bye week didn't have to worry about anything. A lot of the teams that are trash didn't have a bye week, so it's kind of nice. Um, we actually had some really good matchups this week due to that. Um, next, we got the San Francisco 49ers. They're going to drop two spots. Yeah, they didn't drop a lot. Um, part of the reason was because I didn't, like, I already was prepared. 
uh, for them to make a big drop. Um, so, honestly, only two spots is not bad for this 49ers ball club. They went against the Saints. They kept up in the beginning and then just fell apart at the end, which is kind of what you expect to see from a team that is so injured. Um, next, we got the Houston Texans, the number 23. They're going to move up a singular spot. Um, Cleveland has had some weird weather games as of late. Um, but this Cleveland's defense is really great. Uh, but yeah, the weird weather games are really what's going to put this team, uh, and make this team not move up as much. Um, I just, I don't know. I need to see them in a better weather game. I think if their defense holds strong against Cleveland. That's great. Um, but I do kind of put Cleveland in the same vein as I do the Browns right now. Uh, or <laughs> Cleveland is the Browns, the Bears. Um, one of those teams that, eh, aren't that great. Um, but are good defensively, so it works. Uh, next, we have the New England Patriots. After besting the Ravens, they move up four spots. Um, they had a great week this week. They kind of proved to me why they needed to be in a better spot. Uh, I kind of got to relish in the fact that they were in the red. Um, at red is in, like, super trash. Don't have to worry about them tier. Um, but, you know... They proved me wrong in an instant. Four and five, not bad, but they need to they need to continue doing better and playing better. They were they had a monsoon game, so again, a lot of good running needing, uh, and they're like one of the top running teams in the league. Um, so games where they have to kind of rely on Cam Newton, I don't think they can do well in those games. Um, so here we are, uh, number twenty one. We have the Cincinnati Bengals dropping four spots. Um, I just. <laughs> I knew this was a tough matchup for the Bengals. Um, I wanted, to, I was hoping the Bengals would win. That would be really hilarious, but a really tough matchup for them. But they didn't get anything done, and that's the problem. That's what I see. They did not get anything done on either side of the football. They need to be better. They need to get better. Um, they're not a playoff team. Um, they're kind of looking like they're going to be like a top 10 pick um, at this point. And that's where I have them, right on the edge of top 10 um, as far as worst. Next, we got the Detroit Lions at number 20, going up three spots from last week. Back in their normal spot. Um, after a win against um, Washington, scoring 30 points, doing well. I think they're better than a lot of these teams that uh, are previous, obviously. Um, I want to see them against, like, we saw them against better opponents, and we saw them struggle. So I kind of think that this is going to be their, where they reside again this year. Um, I feel like they are a decent 6-8 win team. But they're not, like, a good team by that uh, measure um, at all. Next, we got the Los Angeles Chargers, who lose in another eight-point game. Um, eight points or less, so one possession or less. What else do I have to say? They're the Los Angeles Chokers. Um, next, we got the Carolina Panthers, who kept up with Tampa Bay most of this game. But the fourth quarter, they kind of got demolished. Like, if you kind of look at the way the game played out... Um, the fourth or the first half of the game, it was 17 to 17, but the second half of the game, 29 to six. So they got demolished in the second half of this game. Um, so if you like, look at it in that perspective, 29 to six at the second half of the game is where, like I said, where things fell apart, where you saw how young this team was. Um, they were able to just, you know, not, it did not work out the way that you kind of intended it to. As a Panthers fan, you want things to look like they're working out and feel better. And I think you guys are on the up and up, but you're, you're back. You're in this mid tier conversation where you're not going to be a tough out. You're a team that you look for later on in the season, um, as a, oh, this could be a scary matchup, but the better teams are going to beat you. Um, and here we are here. That happened next. We have the Chicago Bears dropping one spot. Um, the Bears drop a spot. Um, they're 5-5, five and five, but they also, again, they're bad. They're not a good team. Um, offensively, when you can struggle as bad as you do offensively, that's just you're setting yourself up for failure right there. You can't score 20 points, um, and that's, that's going to be a downfall. Literally, you just don't. Your team does not score 20 points. Out of the 10 games your team has played, there has been one, two, three, four. Four out of 10 games you've scored 20 points. You want to know those games that you scored 20 points in? The the Lions, which has, like, you know, they're the Lions. They're not that, they're not 100% great, but they're your best opponent that you scored 30 on or 20 on. Um, then you have the, the Falcons, which... 
have like one of the worst defenses in the league. So if you don't score 30, that's terrible. Um, and then the Panthers, you score 23. And that's your third game. Uh, and then the Saints, you are 4-0 and in games where you scored 20 points. That just is like your defense is actually really good. They do their thing. But that's just bad. Terrible that, you know, a team only has to score 20 points against your defense. And you basically win. Um, which is, yeah, that's super bad uh, to have that happen. Uh, and be that case that your defense has to work that hard. I think that, honestly... This defense is going to get dismembered soon, and their windows are closing very easily and very quickly. Uh, next, we have the Minnesota Vikings moving up four spots after their win. They kind of proved to me, they I finally gave them the big rise. They proved to me that they were a team that should have, re- they, like, they should not have done the, as bad as they were. Which, a lot of people were like, yeah, they shouldn't have been, but they looked terrible in the beginning of the season. So, that's why they were in that, like, 26 range. So, now they're back. Um, in action, uh, honestly, I think the turnaround was against Seattle. Surprise, the 32nd ranked defense. Um, but yeah, honestly, they kind of, they, they show that they can do something and they can do well. Um, and I can't wait to see how this team kind of goes forward if they're going to end with a winning record. Um, cause I think they are very able to, after winning three straight tough divisional games, um, definitely helping them out significantly. Uh, next, we have the Cleveland Browns. Again, they're kind of in the same vein as the Bears, like I said earlier. They're not a team that you're going to be like, yes, they can win offensively. You're not going to win in a shootout. Like, they're not. <laughs> they are just not built for that. Um, they have a tough ground and pound game. Um, and without that, they're nothing. They're, they they literally can't do anything. Um, so here we are in a situation in which um, they're turning into the Bears. And they're right next to the Bears. Surprise. Um, I was actually debating on dropping them to 16, but then I was like, ah, I'm lazy, whatever. Um, also, they haven't shown enough. Um, the Vikings haven't shown enough to move up. Same with the Browns not showing enough to move down. Um, I think if they were to fight each other, I think it would be more 50-50. Like, either team could win, depending on the weather. Um, next, we have the Miami Dolphins, who are going to be 14th. Um, they stay put after their winning against the Chargers. Again, I called them the Los Angeles Chokers for a reason. Although, for once, um, the Chargers just had no chance in this game, um, as the Dolphins had the 14 to nothing lead early in this game. Uh, two, uh, no, two touchdowns, uh, no picks. But, again, having a sub-200 game, which makes it very interesting to me to see how this team thrives. But they thrive defensively. Uh, but unlike some of these teams like the Bears and the Browns, they actually have offensive capabilities, which is why they're ahead of those two teams. But a team that has more offensive capabilities than they do, the Oakland Raiders, I call them Oakland, Las Vegas Raiders, um, they are, you know, they're 2-0, and or not 2-0, and jeez, that was a long time ago, they weren't ever, they weren't 2-0 and this year, um, but they, here they are, they're continuing to play well, they demolished the Broncos, they did what they needed to do, um, they, uh, they didn't show enough to move up, but they are definitely in that conversation, um, and something we need to talk about in that regard. Next, we got the Tennessee Titans dropping three spots and getting out of the top ten, um, losing two games straight is bad enough, but also, the teams you've lost to are actually quality opponents. And on the season, you really haven't beaten that much of a quality. You haven't beaten a quality team, in my eyes. You, you, Except for the Bills. You've beat the Bills. you demolished the Bills um, off of that weird like COVID week. Um, that weird COVID bye week in week three, which is actually very bad for a lot of teams. A lot of teams would actually have struggles with that. Um, but I mean, other than the Bills, you beat the Titan or the the Broncos, the Jags, the Vikings, and the Texans. Those are your, and the Bears. Five teams to me that aren't necessarily quality football teams. A lot of people are gonna be like, "What the heck? You have them ranked higher than some of these other teams." But yeah, they're not quality football teams. None of these teams, besides the Bills, are above number sixteen. Um, so no good wins. Um, and that's going to be what drives you and prevents you from being higher on this list. Um, you just got beat by who the team who's now number 11. Um, they had some quality wins, unlike you. 
they had this team has some quality W's. They're six and three as well. Their losses, the Colts' losses, come against the Colts, or not the Colts, the the Jaguars, which is a bad loss. Not even gonna lie. Cleveland and Baltimore. So three actual quality losses. Whereas your wins, your quality wins are against. I mean, you don't have very many quality wins either. Now looking at it. Um, but you beat the Titans, so flip-flop. Neither of these teams actually have really good quality wins, but they have a prove-it opportunity against the Green Bay Packers. Um, they're going to need to prove it because, yeah, they don't have quality wins either. You know, speaking of quality, I should probably check myself before I wreck myself, but, yeah. Ugh. But at least they beat the Bengals, unlike you. Um, so, <laughs> anyway, but uh, you can say the same thing for the Jags. But it, these teams are so evenly matched, you can't put them, like, on the same, like, you know, playing field, but, uh, or you can, you have to put them in the same playing field. They're not all super good, but they're not all bad either. Uh, next, we got the Arizona Cardinals moving up to number 10. Back in the top 10 are the Cardinals after exiting that last week. Um, you could say that they don't deserve to be where they're at. And I get that a lot, of, but I think a lot of, the, I can tell you that a lot of the reason why they're in the top 10 again is the Titans falling down. Um, winning off of a Hail Mary play is not going to get you far, in my opinion. It's not going to make it so that you're in, like, top team discussions. Um, great, you got a Hail Mary, and typically if you beat the team ahead of you, you're going to flip-flop. I did not see that, um, and I didn't see that ability. I would have actually probably been mad as a Bills fan, um, if I saw this. Um, I'm actually going to put the keep the Bills ahead of the Cardinals. Even though they're going to drop a spot, they're going to stay ahead of the Cardinals. I think in, in most situations, you're not going to, you know, lose to a Hail Mary. You're going to win that game. Um, and so, because of that, they are staying where they are. But that was an exciting game. Uh, next, we got the Los Angeles Rams going up two spots to number eight. They played Seattle very well. They also match up very well against Seattle, which is why I told Joy to pick Los Angeles. It's why I picked the Rams as well. I hate picking against my favorite team, but when you're doing pick you don't do pick based off of emotions. You do pick based off of logic, fact, and statistics. Statistically, the Rams are better than the Seattle Seahawks in a lot of ways. They can attack the Seattle Seahawks in a lot of different ways. But what you did see was the fact that the Rams can't score points either. The Rams, the only reason the Rams are where they are is because they can move the football, they can take clock, but they are not a point getter this season. They are definitely much more defense oriented get those turnovers um and so as it stands i still keep them where they are below seattle um but because again not being able to score points is just not going to help you um you have to be able to score at least i would say 27 if you can get 27 on a weekly basis then you're in a good spot um and as long as your defense is mediocre you're good um this defense is not mediocre this defense is actually really good um but they actually have an offense that can actually help them out um, and do things on, like, the Bears and the Browns. And, like, so they can get games and get the Ws, but they don't have a defense or an offense to kind of help supplement that and play complementary football. Um, next, we got Green Bay. They're going to drop two spots after almost losing to Jacksonville. If they would have lost to Jacksonville, they would have plummeted even further on this list. Number seven, I think, is a good spot for them. They, again... L losing to Jacksonville was tough. That's a tough game um, to endure. I mean, like, it, like Maze Master and I were actually talking about this, and we were like, oh, it'd be really sad if this happened, and then they had the lead, and I was like, oh my god, and they were tied most of this game, and it's just like, what is happening? What is going on? Why is it happening? Um, and yeah, like, honestly, this Packers ball club, they have Aaron Rodgers, they have an it factor, but they need to keep that it factor intact because if they don't, that's bad. Um, and next, we have the Seattle Seahawks dropping two spots as well from last week. Last week, I had them at four. Didn't hurt them very much. You're losing to the Bills. This week, I'm going to hurt them a little bit more because, you know, again, this is not an emotional. This is something statistical. Um, ten turnovers in four games. Let's just put that in the air real quick. Ten turnovers. Four games let's average that out for a second that's two and a half turnovers a game 
That's two and a half possessions. Let's just, for the sake of it, we'll say two and two games and three and a three, or three and two games. Um, that's bare minimum two possessions that you are giving them a shorter field than necessary. Um, or in the case of Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks lately, a lot of their turnovers have been in the red zone. Buy points. <laughs> Have a great day. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> that's a problem. Uh, but if I were to sit here and if people are going to tell me, oh, the Seahawks should be lower, I'd be like, uh, seven's the lowest or eight would be the lowest I would go on this team. Um, to me, they are definitely still a top 10 team. They are a team that's going to like kind of show out and do good. Um, I think that, yes, this has been a stumble for Russell Wilson these last two weeks. Um, or I could even say the last four weeks and you could attribute to that to be like, oh, you have a lot better opponents and blah, 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 blah. And while I would say, yes, there is a lot better of an opponent. Um, and the reason why I have the Cardinals and the Rams ranked below them, they don't got the Jets left on their schedule. Um, we played Dallas when they were healthy. Um, then we all, they don't have Washington football team. They don't have Philly. They don't have the Giants on their schedule. Like the schedule for the teams that are in the rest of the NFC East or NFC West, excuse me, not East. Um, honestly, there's a big disparity between the teams that are here, and that's kind of what you want to look at, and you want to say, oh, well, hello there. Um, because here's the rest of Seattle's schedule. At home against Arizona, that's going to be tough, obviously. You're not going to want to, you know, play in that game. You're going to be like, oh, my gosh, this is a tough one. Why do we have to do this? Why do we? What do we have to do, and what did we cause to endure that? Um, but, you know, that's a tough game, not going to lie. Um, then on the road against Philly on Monday night after a big two-week rest, at home against the Giants and the Jets, on the road to football team, that's the next stretch of four games after the Cardinals game. That should be four wins. And then your other divisional. So your divisional opponents, you have three left, and then, you know, the rest of the teams you have to face, the high, like, other than the division, the highest one is number 29, or 26. Cool. Great. That's easy. Um, Just take care of your divisional games. The Cardinals, they've got the Patriots, but after the, like, and they actually have a tough team in the Patriots. They've got the Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles, and then they have four divisional games still left on their schedule. Um, Then you have San Francisco, who I know they're not really not necessarily in the talks of winning, but they've got Buffalo. They've got, after that, they've got um, four divisional games as well, it looks like. Um, unless I'm, no, they got Buffalo, football team, and Dallas. Um, so they got the, a couple of NFC least, least opponents. And then you got the Rams. The Rams still have the Buccaneers and four divisional games. The Patriots are still left on their schedule. So the Rams actually have the toughest schedule in the division that's left. So I definitely see that See if Seattle... Seattle, I feel like, still definitely takes this division. Um, if you look at it on a schedule basis. The other team that I think has a chance to win the division is the Cardinals. But um, the Rams, I think, are definitely going to be a two-seed. I don't... Like, I don't, based on their schedule, I definitely... Or not a two-seed. Uh, second uh, in the division. Uh, I definitely see them where they're at. I still think Seattle's the favorite in the division. Um... But it could change very easily. Um, after that long rant about the schedules in the NFC uh, West, <laughs> let's go talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who literally just demolished in the second half. Um, so they get to go up two points. I mean, if you demolish like that against a divisional opponent, you're going up. I don't care. Um, next, we have the Ravens. I'm going to use the same principle. I'm not going to punish them too hard. Um, I do think that the Ravens do have some work to do. I'm not discrediting that whatsoever. They definitely have some work to do. Um, but I do think that this team is going to continue to do better, get better, and do all the stuff that they need to do to survive and play at a high level. Um, and next, this is going to be a little bit of a surprise for everybody here. I think a lot of people would have thought that this team with its name would have been called already despite, uh, or after the key injury, but I honestly... I'm going to put the New Orleans Saints at number three. 
Um, and yeah, oh my gosh, the Saints are at three. They move up three spots. What what deserves that? This team has shown poise before with the backup quarterback. Think of Teddy Bridgewater and what Teddy Bridgewater did as the quarterback to the New Orleans Saints. Troll, would you like to demonstrate? Um, like, honestly. 5-0 and when Teddy Bridgewater was uh, taken over. And everybody was like, oh my god, Teddy Bridgewater's amazing. Blah, 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 blah. It's not that Teddy Bridgewater was an ama- like a bad quarterback. He was a game management quarterback. That works in the Sean Payton system. Um, the pieces around, you know, James Winston are there. Um, do I think they're going to have a hard time against Atlanta? Of course. It's a divisional game with your backup quarterback. It's going to be tough. But they've got Falcons, Broncos. They have a game against somebody else and then Falcons again. I want to say it's Panthers. Um, don't quote me on that. I could be very wrong. I'm going to double check this right now, but, um, Drew Brees is out for three to six weeks. So the median of course is four and a half. So let's just be on the safe side and say four. Um, yeah. So they got Falcons. Okay. I wasn't wrong. Falcons, Denver Broncos, Falcons, Eagles. Okay, cool. That's four games. Now, if he's out against the Chiefs, that's an oofy. Um, but you're probably going to lose that game anyway, because the Chiefs are in another world. Um, but yeah, anyway, so let's be fair, like, you keep them out, and then, then it's, um, Vikings and Panthers. Like, you're gonna win. You should, even with Jameis, you should win three of those games. I think one time against Atlanta might trip you up, but you're also the Saints, and you could actually, you could win. Um, with the Jameis, but, you know, two games against Atlanta with Jameis Winston, um, that's, like, you couldn't have guessed or hoped for any better, um, but, yeah, so, honestly, good, good job for them, um, hopefully Drew Brees is okay, and it's a three-week injury, not four, or five, or six, but we'll see what happens in the remaining future. Next, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers at two, ultimate cream of the Bengals, good job, you dropped the Bengals, but you did not, you can't go number one when the Chiefs are on bye, um, so it'll be interesting to see. I can't wait to see that as hopefully the AFC championship game, but hopefully y'all had and enjoy this video. I liked the, doing this format. I like getting a lot of the bad teams out of the way and the beauty of the fact that the playoff and the things are changing, um, and are getting more solidified is that a lot of these like low tier teams, I can just breeze by. Um, so it'll be very, no pun intended. It'll be very amazing, but hopefully you guys had a wonderful day. Love y'all. Peace.